import capabilities allow you to really create a very large brain structure rather quickly from other formats. And that's what I'd like to, uh, to concentrate on sharing with you today. If I go up to File and I take a look at the Import option, you can see I have a list of many different import capabilities. And I'm going to share just a few of these with you today. The first one I'm going to share is actually a Mind Manager file. Now, Mind Manager is another uh, common file that people use for creating mind maps. But as Shelley demonstrated earlier, they are limited in size and limited in structure. Um, um, I can create a Mind Manager file about one specific topic. However, there's no way to go from, uh, from that individual file that has uh, ideas or, or topics way out on a far-reaching branch and connect them to other topics elsewhere in that Mind Manager file on other branches or in, in distant locations. And the brain gives you the option to do that. Uh, so I'm going to select an existing MMAP file that I have. And I have that out here on my desktop in my database documents. I've got this file called Weekly Status Meeting. So let's say we had a weekly status meeting and uh, someone in the group uh, put all the weekly status meeting information into a, uh, into a mind map. But that weekly status meeting is just a small component of my organization. I want to relate it to other things within my organization, other people, other documents, emails, spreadsheets, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and import this weekly status meeting. I'll go ahead and say Open. And I'll import it right here under my 2009 ideas. And um, I'll go ahead and say uh, Always Overwrite. And there we go. So uh, in just a few minutes, I've taken a very large mind map, and I have uh, imported that into Personal Brain. So now I have my weekly status meeting. Everything that was branched off of weekly status meeting is now a child thought under weekly status meeting. So I could look at my, uh, my marketing and see my trade shows, online advertising, emails, uh, my agenda, project status, and so on. Um, under my demo, I've got some critical issues. And I see there's a part shortage um, for a, a component that we're putting together for this particular client. Well, maybe I want to link this part shortage to one of my existing engineers to, uh, to start handling this particular issue. Um, and so I'm going to link that up to Bill. Uh, I'm going to link that to Bill Williams. So I'm going to make sure Bill Williams, who is an engineer, is handling this part shortage. And maybe we're purchasing parts uh, for this particular client uh, from another client. Um, called, we'll just go ahead and select uh, Widget A. So the part shortage is part of Widget A. And Widget A falls under a project status. Um, and Widget A is going to be managed by, I'll select just a, simply another person here, Judy Sampson. So maybe I want to make sure that Judy Sampson, who is one of my managers, who's handling Widget A production, uh, is in communication with Bill Williams. And uh, Bill Williams, I'm going to make sure to link Bill down to Judy Sampson. So almost instantly, I've started integrating just meeting notes and these, these individual items coming from a mind map into the bigger picture, into the much larger personal brain uh, with, uh, with the multiple links that I'm capable of creating. Um, and as we can see, Bill and Williams is taking care of the part shortage. Uh, now reporting to Bill is Judy Sampson, who is uh, managing production of Widget A, uh, which is hopefully going to alleviate that part shortage, which is one of the critical issues in the demo that we're putting together uh, in our 2009 ideas for AT&T. So you can see I've really started uh, working that, uh, like I said, that individual meeting note and all the individual components of that into the bigger picture of my personal brain. Now additionally, um, uh, bringing in uh, mind maps is just simply one option of creating a brain rather quickly. I can also bring in information from individual spreadsheets. Um, I've got a spreadsheet here uh, for prospective clients for 2010. So the sales team has put together, uh, uh, put their heads together. They've come up with some possible leads people that we really want to pursue and, and talk to in, in 2010. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and create a new topic here under my clients. And I'm simply going to uh, call this new topic um, uh, probably, there we go. There we go. I want to um, call this uh, new thought here under clients, prospective clients. So again, I've just simply created a new thought where I'll attach all of my prospective clients. And as you can see, I already have my prospective clients here in a spreadsheet. Uh, so I put this together during, uh, during a recent meeting. Now I just want to take this information, and I want to really go through and decide which one of my sales reps are going to be in charge of calling indivi these individual people. Who are the contacts of that organization? What are their interests? What are their needs? And start keeping notes on, the, on this information. So obviously more information that I can fit into a single spreadsheet. I'm going to copy this information that I have in my spreadsheet. I just simply selected all of the individual cells, and I go into my prospective clients, I right click in the brain, and I'm going to paste this outline. So it takes those 24 individual cells, and it breaks it down into the personal brain structure. And uh, it takes just a moment to uh, finish pasting those in. So there I can see I've got my 2010 prospective clients. <clears throat> Some categorizations that, that we give our, our clients here at eSolutions Consulting, my fictitious company. Uh, so you can see I've got the bronze level clients, silver level clients, A1 Industries is broken down into Asia, Europe, North America. And let's say for my North America uh, A1 Industries, um, I'm going to have uh, Sam Highbrow, the VP of HR, or we'll just say Sam Franklin. Sam Franklin is going to be following up on this particular lead. So at a later date when I go back and I'm reviewing my prospective clients for 2010 when it's getting close to the end of 2009, I know the individual person that I'm going to be talking to that has been assigned to each individual organization. Or I can keep track in my notes and so on or link individual documents or emails that I've received from this client to this particular thought, thus integrating it into the bigger picture of, of uh, of my organization. And in addition to spreadsheets, another report that I want to share with you, let me just work back up here to, uh, I'm actually going to go use my past thought list here to go back to uh, AT&T, or no, I'll stay in for prospective clients. Let's say I want to import my uh, bookmarks. Um, maybe I've got under prospective clients or as a link of prospective clients, um, I've got some resource links. So I've created a thought called resources. And my resources for tracking my prospective clients is all going to be all of the news information that I've accumulated and been placing into my Internet Explorer favorites. Now let me just bring up an IE window here. Um, I think for my uh, Internet Explorer favorites, uh, you can see that I have all of just simply the, the basic information. So I've got Microsoft Web Links. Uh, MSN, websites, Windows Live, and so on. So these are usually the basics that come with Internet Explorer. I don't use my favorites too often, me personally, uh, because all of that information is typically going into my personal brain. Uh, but uh, I know that many people do use those favorites. We're very uh, much aware of that. And therefore, we gave you the option here in personal brain to uh, instantly and quickly be able to integrate all those favorites into your personal brain. So now, once again, I'm going to click on File and select Import. And this time, I'm going to select my IE Favorites. And you may have noticed in that list, um, I also have Firefox installed. So my Firefox bookmarks can be uh, imported as well. It's the same procedure. Uh, it verifies, are you sure you want to, uh, to complete this task? Yes, I do. And it's simply one by one attaching all of those thoughts in the same structure that it was created in the Favorites as child thoughts of resources. So we'll just give uh, uh, Personal Brain a moment to process here. And there you go. You can see within just a few, uh, a few seconds, really, I have uh, now five child thoughts of resources. And all of those are broken down into the subcategories, uh, which is an exact representation of how my IE favorites were, uh, uh, were associated uh, from my Internet Explorer. So I've instantly gathered all of that information 
as you can see, it's uh, saying downloading the URL. What it's basically doing is actually creating an index of all of that information. So each individual page that it linked to is also automatically indexed and is therefore searchable within my personal brain as well. Now I'd really like to start getting into some more, uh, even more advanced capabilities of, of creating personal brains. Um, uh, many of us, uh, from time to time, create smaller brains that are individual topic-oriented brains. And from time to time, it becomes necessary to import those personal brains into a much larger brain, sort of a mega brain, if you will. And I'd like to go ahead and do that now. Let's say under my resources, um, I'm going to, uh, under links, let's say there's a new client here called Acme that I've been following. So I've got a thought for uh, Acme in my personal brain. And I also have created a separate Acme Corporation uh, individual personal brain as well. And at a later date, I find it necessary to gather some of the information, not all of the information, but just some of the information in Acme Corporation and incorporate that into my much larger mega brain or much larger personal brain. I'm going to go in and just simply gather all of the marketing information. Now, as you can see under marketing, I've got that broken into projects, ideas, people, and so on. And all of those individual thoughts are broken out with, with links as well. Uh, but it's just this branch that I'm really interested in. What I'm going to do is click on, um, uh, click on Edit up above, and I'm going to select Crawl and Modify Selection. So I'm on the actual target thought that I'm interested in. I'm going to select Crawl and Modify Selection. So I'm going to add to what we call the Selection box. It's a small box that's going to appear over on the left-hand side of my screen. And I want to add this particular thought and every childward thought for, we'll just go ahead and say, uh, three generations away. So this particular thought and three generations childward or down will be added into the selection box. And I say OK, and you can see I instantly have 19 thoughts selected here in the selection box. I'm going to copy these thoughts. I simply right click on the selection box and say copy selected thoughts. I've got those copied and on my clipboard. I'm now going to jump back into my eSolution frame. And right here under the Acme thought, back in my eSolutions brain, I can right click and select Paste Thoughts. And what this is doing, and yes, I want to verify that I want to complete this task, it's actually taking those individual thoughts uh, that I copied from the, a different brain, from the Acme brain, and it's going to be pasting them as child thoughts here as under this Acme thought in a completely separate brain. Now, it's grabbing everything from the attachments to the thought types, uh, link types, any of the notes, any of the additional information. Uh, you can see under Peoples, I had a little graphic associated with each individual thought, uh, just to signify that that is a person. Um, it brought that, in, that information in with it. And as you can see, when I mouse over, when I mouse over Tom, for instance, it tells me that Tom is a marketing team member. So all of that additional information that was available to me um, in the Acme Corporation brain has been brought in in this transfer of thoughts, this copy and paste of individual thoughts. Now let's take this one step further. Let's say I, I'm not only interested in just the marketing division of the Acme Corporation, I want my entire Acme brain uh, to become a, uh, all of that information to be part of this mega brain, this, this larger brain that I've created. Um, rather than going in and doing a crawl and modify for each individual thought, um, uh, we can actually skip that process when it, we know that it's the entire brain we're interested in merging together. And I can simply click on File and select Merge Brain. So now I've got a list of all my brains that I have here uh, on uh, this particular laptop. I'm going to select the Acme Corporation brain and say Open. And do I want to verify? Yes, I definitely want to perform this task. And now I'm not clicking on anything. So what you're seeing on the screen, um, if, uh, if the GoToMeeting can keep up, is what it did is it went out to the Acme Corporation brain, copied everything, came back to my eSolutions Consulting brain, and it, noticed there's a couple, it notices that there's a couple of duplicates as well. So I want to always skip the duplicates. I already have those. 
Um, always skip on those. I'll overwrite that one. And you can see pretty quickly it's going to take the entire Acne Brain and uh, bring it here into my E Solutions Consulting. Now the Acne Brain was actually fairly large, so it's going to take uh, just a little bit. But as you can see, we're making progress here, and it's it's incorporating that entire brain, all the thoughts, all the attachments, everything into one larger brain file. And with these two examples, you can see of, of copying a section of a brain or merging an entire brain, um, um, you can see that what we can actually do is we can create these larger brain files. And then if a person wants to see a smaller subset of thoughts, we can always copy those subset of thoughts and paste them into a smaller brain. And, and zip up that smaller brain and email it out to our colleagues or to our boss or whoever we want to share that smaller brain with. Um, likewise, we can create smaller brains, and we can always come back and merge them together at a later date. I personally am a fan of, of that process, uh, but there's really no right or wrong. I think um, uh, Shelley and, and many of the other founding members of, of the Brain Technologies have one much larger brain file, and then if they ever feel a need to share a portion of that brain, they simply copy it out. Do a crawl and modify of a, of a smaller spec selection, paste that into a brain that they're willing to share. So therefore, they're not sharing their entire brain, which may have confidential information in it, uh, with other colleagues or, or clients and, and so on. 